So by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can sample drums like the classic Amen break and turn it into these awesome glitchy patterns like this. I'm going to show you how to sample drums in Ableton Live. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how you can sample a drum break from an existing song. And I'm gonna show you three different techniques you can then use to chop and resequence that drum break. What's worth noting here is that every technique I'm showing you is possible no matter what version of Ableton Live you're using, whether you're using light or all the way up to sweet. These techniques are good for the whole time. So go ahead and strap right in and let's get started. So first I have an instance here of the Amen Break, which is one of the most classic drum samples of all time. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend that you do is turn off the grid. So I am going to right click and select snap to grid. You can also use command or control four to do that. And I'm going to find the downbeat of the measure that I want to sample because we have a little bit of the horns at the beginning here. So I'm gonna to need to find a measure in the middle here. Okay, so that would be right here. So I'm just gonna zoom in until I get the start of that waveform. And this is why you turn off the grid because it's so much easier to be precise. And I'm just gonna do Command E to split right there and we'll pull away what we don't need. So if I zoom out and select the clip now where I cut it, it should feel like we're starting on beat one. which it is. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that's step one. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut out just a single measure of it for this example. So what I'm going to go ahead and do then is I'm going to play until I can feel where the downbeat of the next measure is. And it looks like it's hitting right here. So similar thing, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to hit Command D and I'm going to cut this. Now I'll delete the other end as well, which I don't need. And I'm gonna turn my grid back on. Now I can go ahead and place my sample at the start of the measure. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the metronome. And let's just say, since I don't have this warped, it, the timing isn't going to adjust itself. Let's say I wanna do the classic thing and I wanna make some drum and bass with this. So I'm gonna go 172 BPM and Notice how the length of the sample changes. It looks as if the sample length changed, but really what I did instead was speed up the timeline. And so you can see at the bottom of the timeline here, we normally really focus on measures, but at the bottom of the timeline here, where it counts the seconds, that has changed. So if I drop it back to 110, we see that adjust. If I go back to 172, we see that adjust. It looks like this is actually changing length, but because it isn't warped, it really technically isn't. So I'm gonna go ahead now and hit play. Okay, so it is out of time, right? Now, the first thing then that we can do to try to get it in time is we can get this entire clip to fit into a single measure. Now, the classic way of doing this would be to add a, to warp this and add a bunch of warp markers in the clip view here to then try to squeeze it all in. We can actually do it a bit more efficiently. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and hit warp and that creates a warp marker right at the start of our clip or the downbeat of our measure, which is what we want. And we've also sliced to the end of our measure. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse over the clip title bar here at the very right hand side of it until this bracket shows up. Then I'm going to hold down shift and we will notice then that a nice little 
triangle appears. And what I'm going to do is while holding shift, I'm going to click and I'm going to resize the clip. And we notice that it also adjusts the warping of the clip. So theoretically, now, if I did my job correctly, then this should be in time. And it is. Because our clip was only a single measure, we took the time to cut out the length that we wanted to. Now, if I wanted it, if I say cut out two measures and wanted it to be two measures, then I would go ahead and uh, do the same process. I would just hold down shift and stretch it on the timeline until it reached that point. So now we have our sample in time, which is the first step. And if you want to do just be safe, you could go ahead and add another warp marker just right at the very end. Additionally, you can right click in here and select crop clip sample. And when you do that, that just gets rid of everything before it. I can't scroll to the sides like I did before. I'm going to command Z back so you can see that. If I go forward and I go back, the entire sample is here, despite the clip only being in this window here. So if I right click and crop clip sample again, that's all gone. Now I can time stretch however I want. If say I want to go to half time, I can do that. If I want to go to double time, which would be crazy at 172 BPM, I can do that. Right, but I'm going to leave it at 172 where I want it. So then from here, now I can play around with the warp engine. If I want to set it to beats, which is the default for drums, I can. And that sounds pretty darn great, but if you wanted to experiment with other warp modes, you can. So the first way that you can chop up your samples is to adjust them on the timeline. So for example, I can do Command C to highlight here where this kick is, and I'm going to place it in a few other spots. I'm going to place one here, and then place one here. So now let's listen to the now modified Amen break. <laughs> Additionally, you can do some more cool timeline chopping. So I can highlight, say, for example, this kick here that I copied over and hit the R key, which will then actually reverse the kick. Now, this won't work if you have musical typing active. Just be aware. So let's listen to that. So we have that, which is really quite cool. And in fact, I could instead maybe move that kick here and hit R and reverse into my snare. Now, you, of course, don't have to work in just one clip. I can duplicate my entire clip and say I want to create some interesting kind of glitchy stutter here. I've got my grid set to narrow for adaptive, and I'm going to zoom in a bit here and just grab the very front end of this kick. And I'm just going to duplicate it right up until we hit this next kick. Right? This is going to make a really kind of glitchy stutter sound. Look at that. You're already Aphex Twin. Now let's say you don't like working with your drums on the timeline and you'd rather chop and sequence via MIDI. You can do that as well quite easily. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new MIDI track and I'm going to drop Simpler in. Then from there, I'm going to go ahead and drag my Amen break in. Now, because we took the time at the beginning to get the clip perfectly in time and chopped together, that's going to save us some time here at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and actually leave it on classic and I'm going to hit warp. I'm now also then going to set up loop. So now it's going to loop this clip. So if I go ahead, for example, and create a nice little four bar loop here, and I'm going to create just a long single note on C3. And let's listen. So now, as long as that note is being played, and because I have this warped, it's going to perfectly loop that measure. 
And we can now do some really cool things really easily. So for example, I can keep my notes to a measure long and I can start shifting around the pitch, which can be really interesting if the sample that you're working with has some sort of melodic content, but still is honestly quite cool with drums as well. So let's listen to this. Really, really quite neat. And we can, of course, play with the warp engine in Simpler like this as well. So for example, I could set it from preserve transients to say preserve 16th notes, turn off the looping mode and tighten up the envelope. Or I could go even more frenetic and go for 32nd notes. Right, I can do other modes, like I love textures, for example. And the more that you play around with pitch, the more that the warp engine is going to really affect the sample. Now, additionally, we can use the built-in controls as well. So for example, I can use the filter. And it's currently set to key track, but I don't have to do that. I can drive the filter by switching its mode. And I can use the LFO. So for example, I can set the LFO to a rate of 16th notes, and I'm going to set it to random, and then set that to pan, and I'm gonna crank up the pan. So every 16th note, the drums are gonna be coming from a different position. Or I can make that even slower, and let's set it to every measure. You get the idea. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do once you have your drums locked in in Simpler like this. Now the final technique I wanna show you essentially combines what we're doing on the timeline and what we're doing in Simpler. So I'm going to insert a MIDI track and I'm going to drop in another instance of Simpler and I'm gonna drop our break in again as well. But instead of classic, I'm actually gonna select slice and what slice mode does is it divides your sample into certain regions. And those regions are defined by what you have sliced by set here. So by default, it is set to transients, but you can slice by beat, region, or manually, where you input the slices yourself. It's worth noting that with any of these modes, you can add additional slices should you want. Now, what this does then is assign each slice to a different key starting on C1. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a MIDI clip here, and I am going to start sequencing. So C1 plays our first slice, and so on and so forth. If I were to just keep moving chromatically up, we would play through all of them. Now, it moves through them pretty quickly, but we can now see that we've essentially taken our drum break and we have divided it into a drum kit, so to speak. And once you have the slices set up how you want, you can then use a MIDI clip to sequence those slices and create your own chops from the drum break that you have created. And so we're essentially combining the two previous techniques. And of course, if I still wanna do some cool glitchy sort of stuff, I just need to increase the grid. Or what I can actually do is highlight a note. So say there is this snare here and I can hit Command E. And while still holding Command, I'm gonna press the up key on my keyboard and that creates division. So I'm gonna go ahead and create six. Once again, creates that kind of glitchy sound. Since my goal was to go for drum and bass style breaks, this works out. And of course, you can then use the warp engine still. And what you can do is you can actually 
compress or expand the length of these slices while keeping the slices the same. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and set it to textures, and then I'm going to double the tempo, which makes each slice twice as long. If I do that again, it's going to sound even more pronounced. And I can adjust grain size and flux too. So those are three different techniques that you can use to sample drums in Ableton Live. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, these techniques work no matter what version of Ableton Live you have, whether that is light all the way up to sweet. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, leaving a comment, and subscribing. I'm working hard to try to grow this channel to 10,000 followers by the end of 2025. Till next time.